Today, we're going to look at different brushes for watercolour texture painting. In particular, I'm going to focus on a range of brushes, some of them brand new, that can be used to create texture by stippling. Stippling. There, that's going to be the word of the day, that stippling. I dare you to type it down below in the comments section. Go on, give it a go. <laughs> stippling. There's many ways of doing this, of course there are. Some methods are easier than others, and some methods has to give a better effect than others as well. So in question, we've got obviously my size double zero brushes I mentioned. We can also buy all sorts of different brushes as well. I've got this one, which is a deer's foot, okay? And this one is by Rosemary & Co, it's a quarter inch. Deer foot stippler, series 35. There you go. And also another one by Rosemary & Co, all right, is gonna be a small, Fan Series 27. Just try them out a minute. I've not tried these yet. These are all brand new brushes for me. So I'll just put a bit of paper there in a minute. Get a little bit of colour on the side of this fan brush. Just one side will do. And I think what I might do is tap some of that off on some kitchen roll. Not too much. And we'll try to stipple just using one corner. Are you ready? And we'll see the kind of effect. Look at that. Hey, it does work, you know. It does work. Just by stippling with a corner of this fan brush. Look at that. That's very effective, I have to say, you know. And you could use this method for a variety of different paintings. You really could. You can you imagine doing this for rocks? For the texture of rocks. For sand as well on the beach. And then, as I mentioned, we've got our deer foot as well. Let's try that one, shall we? Just tap that in, don't overload it. Again, we'll tap some of that off on some kitchen roll. And we'll try that. What's that one like? The deer foot is another good method of stippling, but you can also use it for foliage as well. Can you imagine if you've got a tree, a blue tree in this case, and I can create all those lovely little leaves in one go? These will be distant leaves, of course. But again, you can use it for texture. You'd have to use a complete flat end of this. You can see how it's all cut that. It's lovely, isn't it? You can use just the edge of that if you want to. So we'll just get a little bit more paint on there, look. I can use the edge of this deer foot to create some effects. Let's use the other edge. We can use the tip of it, and we can just use the whole kind of flat end of this to create even more texture as well. Look at that. And you can see the effects when it's nearly dry that that also works really well. But it's going to be for fairly large areas. So you have to remember that when you're working with something like this. If I want to work on this fish here, which I'm working on as a video for my members on Patreon, if you're interested, have a look at the link down below, okay? Then I think this one's a little bit too thick or wide for this end here to kind of work with. But I must admit, yeah, that's very effective. But really, between the two, I'd probably use this one for my fish if I decide to use it. But even so, as you can see profile-wise, it's quite narrow, but still a fairly large brush for such a small painting. That's where my size double zero comes in. And whilst I can create one dot of colour at a time, it's surprising how quickly you can cover an area. I've also had a lot more control over the small brush. I know exactly where each dot of colour is going to go. So I can focus the dots more in one area than another and build up actual tonal patterns and differences. So now I'm going to start thinking about the texture onto this little brick. And all I'm going to use is my old brush here, which is an old mixing brush I use for mixing all my paints with. I've had it for many years, it's an old acrylic brush. So very stiff bristles really on this look. You can see the state of them, they're really mess. That was pointed once upon a time, believe it or not. Anyway, ideal for the job for stippling with. So use an old brush, anything will do really, as long as it's old. I've got some old kind of oil painting brushes here, which I could use as well for kind of slipping onto paper with. So many ways of doing that. So I'm going to go into my mixers here, as you can see. Now, all that colour there, by the way, is my little tester card. It's raw sienna, burnt sienna, and, and I want this more to a milky consistency, and that's going to be all four of these mixers here. Start off with the lightest one first. And I get some kitchen roll and just tap a little bit on there first of all so it's not too overloaded. And then you can start to think about tapping in the lightest marks you can see, or the lighter areas, you can see them on the reference photograph. 
Remember, it doesn't have to be the same one. After kind of replicating everything exactly as it is. If it's too blobby, take some paint off that brush and then keep stippling. <laughs> and try to think about some of the shapes you can see within the stone, okay, within the brick. I'm not pressing too hard actually as well. And you find when you start drawing out a paint on that brush, that's perfect really, because then you get even really, really kind of very fine marks with it. I wouldn't do this with really decent quality brushes really, because you can damage the brushes by stippling a lot. Oh, I've just found another brush out as well. It's one of the, well, one of those very cheap ones. You know, you can buy really, really cheap brushes. Look at this, look. Um, from the discount shops. This, I think it's like five for a pound or something like that. So if I'll try one of them, because even though the bristles do come off on these, I'm not too worried with this technique. So now I'm gonna go into the next one, which is that Indian Red and Burnt Sienna. So I'll stipple that, take a little bit off. And then we can carry on making more patterns with this one as well. Try this brush. Well, that's not too bad actually. There's are very, fairly stiff bristles on this as well. So you don't need expensive brushes, do you? You really don't. Even my detail brushes are quite cheap to buy. You know, well, so you don't need it. It depends on the, the kind of uh, style you like to paint with. So the same procedure applies with this, is by stippling, looking for some of the kind of patterns that you can see within the brick. Where you can see this color a little bit more concentrated as well in places. Not concentrated as that, if you do too much, lift it off, there you go, done. That's why it's always wise to kind of tap your brush just on some kitchen roll first. And when you get to the, well, stage where it's nearly ready for reloading, make use of that, because you get the finest of marks again, just by using it. It's all gone now, there you go. Now I can see more of a kind of pattern around this area here, around this brick. So I'm gonna increase some of the marks just by very gently tapping. And you see gradually it's building up, isn't it? And that's what I want it to do with every layer that we add. It's gonna get more, more and more detailed, should I say, as it goes along. Keep rotating that brush around as well, as you'll find that the pattern tends to replicate itself. If you're not careful, the stippling starts to create a repeated design, which isn't in the least bit authentic or realistic. So there you go, that's a little bit about stippling. Stippling. Don't forget to leave me a comment down below, including our word of the day, stippling. From stippling to splattering, and that's in the video to the top right. I'll see you there.